you know, everybody thinks that they need to have some big grand idea once they get into graduate school because they have high hopes on their idea and where it's going to go. But I'm going to tell you this right now. That's not the way that you should be thinking about it because a big grand idea is not really go anywhere. It doesn't have legs. So, um, if you don't know me, I'm Professor Dave Maslach. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I want to pay the favor for it and help you out. So big grand ideas do not resonate with other people. People just don't see what you're trying to say and what you're trying to get at. And it's been my experience time and time again the reason why an idea that I have does not take off is simply because it is being too lofty. And every time that I get into the the in-depth, sort of understand things that are on the street, projects seem to work a little better that way. I'm more interested in that particular project and then other people get what I'm trying to do with that particular project. There is rarely anything that starts from the lofty side and goes down and, and, and has a sort of big grand vision because you just get lost in the weeds. You don't really know what you're talking about and you don't really get there. But if you start with something very simple, very practical, very everyday in your regular life, then you seem to get a lot of, you get a lot of, uh, you make a lot of progress on that. So what do I mean by all of this? I'm going to give you examples just by looking around at this moment. Because I think a lot of people sort of forget that everyday life is really, really cool. So, you know, I've got this this container here. I don't know if you've seen these things before, but they're the earbuds containers that you have. Well, you know, nobody has sat down and tried to study the industry behind how that thing actually formed. Where did the idea come from to have this shape? Where did What did it look like? when they first started, what was the prototypes like, what's the battery that's in there, how does that actually all work and, and come together? What was the creative process in terms of getting people to understand that that's what we needed was this other container? Where is it being forecasted to go in the future? Now these are very practical sort of everyday questions, but they can be easily turned into something that was a little bit more lofty where we think about, so for example, we might, might think about um, foresight with product development, for example. Um, we might think about um, ideation in, in product development. We might think about the plastics industry and how the plastics industry evolved over time. So that's one example. We can get into other examples, my coffee mug. Love this one, right? So I got this a few years ago from my kids. It says, Dad, Dad is the captain of our crew. I love that. Um, and, you know, you can talk about that, the, the pottery industry. How does that form? What has happened in the last few years with the evolution of Etsy in the formation of the pottery industry? So we would have had a lot of, um, you know, not so artisanal, sort of goods that were given to us, but Etsy has made it so it's easy to get some of this artisanal goods. And there's lots of people that do pottery that you can get access to that. And so what has happened? What's the sort of, what what has Etsy done to these providers? Maybe there's actually been a consolidation. Maybe it's encouraged more um, one-off sort of artisanal people to actually um, grow. So maybe the industry has grown tremendously and then it's hurt, hurt the um, mug industry, the sort of, you know, the mug industry that's that's cheaply made from, um, not that I love this mug, but, um, you know, the, the sort of standard mugs that you get. That, just by even looking around right now, we can look at, um, you know, I'm at my, my home, we have cladding. You know, the, uh, the, the cladding that we have on the outside of our homes has changed and it's evolved. Why has that evolved? What's going on there? Is it because that there's been a new technology that's at play? Um, is there a new consumer taste? Maybe we look at the consumer taste and we see at how consumer tastes impact uh, um, uh, the evolution of the housing industry. 
you know, maybe that there's some real big macro issues. So for example, I know that, that um, HUD in the United States, and it's not general across the world, but HUD is a sort of agency that encourages people to get houses. That's had a tremendous impact in terms of home ownership in the United States, because that's been kind of a policy that the United States have had. So you can look at that and what's the impetus of HUD on um, consumer preferences for, for housing. You can see that it's, it really gets really big and very quickly to start asking these questions. And you just simply have to start and be practical in your everyday life. That's why I always say, do things that are on your bucket list or things that you always wanted to do or things that you spend a tremendous amount of your time and effort on because that's your everyday life. That's what you're living and it's going to benefit what you're going to do. So your bucket list, for example, this is where you know, you do things, there's that movie from a few years ago, it's about a decade it's old now. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it. It's a very good movie um, where uh, you, you do all the things before you kick the bucket, all, you, all the things you want to do before you kick the bucket. And so what you need to do is think about what are the things that I really, really want to do in my life? What are the things that are really interesting that I've always wanted to do? Well, you know, maybe you've always wanted to visit all these different water parks um, around the country, around the world, or go visit all of the theme parks that are in the, um, you know, around the United States, around the world. I mean, hell yeah, talk about an amazing research project to do that, where you actually start investigating theme parks and the evolution of theme parks or the evolution of water parks. How did how did water parks start? Where, what does that cause from? That's kind of an interesting question because it's totally frivolous. And yet, um, you know, we spend a lot of money on that industry. That's kind of interesting to think about it. You know, what is the entertainment industry in terms of the water park? Um, you know, what is going on there? What is going on with the technology itself behind that? What is driving it? Then, you know, the awesome thing is you get to visit all of those places and go talk to those people and, and actually get to do those things. Um, you know, maybe you really love to motorcycle. Well, then study the motorcycle industry. That's going to be really fun and interesting for you. And there's lots to be said about that. And maybe you want to study. So, for example, you know, you, you want to study mergers and acquisitions, for example, sort of a lofty thing that that, that you know, um, I just think it's very lofty and, and it's not very easily understood. We know what those things are, but it's just very abstract. And so if that's the case, then you study mergers and acquisitions within the uh, motorcycle industry, or maybe you like bug collecting, then you look at, um, you know, mergers and acquisitions within, within collectors of bugs, because that does happen, right? So there is people that, that, that maybe have, um, you know, a really nice bug collection, and then somebody else is over there that has another bug collection, and then they acquire that entire bug collection, and maybe they have somebody that was actually going to be part of that. I mean, these things happen. Coin collection is another one that you can sort of think about. You just have to start looking at your everyday life, and then just start layering on top one little sort of lofty element of what you're trying to do. Now that is one element. Now you have to keep layering on top in the future in terms of coming up with a theoretical angle to explain and explore this thing of what mergers and acquisitions in the bug collecting industry looks like. But you have to keep doing that where you do things that are interesting to you and that are part of your everyday life or things that you've always wanted to do and um, start tackling those particular things. So, you know, I'm going to give you a few more examples and then and then we're going to go just from, from our everyday life. So, you know, t-shirts have not always looked like this. The synthetic fiber that's in this t-shirt has evolved in the last few years. And so it would be interesting to study the evolution and um, the growth of synthetic fibers and what has driven that, what has been the sort of motivation behind that. So if you're somebody that was interested in say, you know, there's this theoretical lofty angle of population ecology, um, where you look at things, how in, uh, and a lot of it's how industry or firms evolve and, and survive and die. Um, so you might look to see at how the synthetic um, fiber industry has evolved? What has been the impetus of that? What has driven 
the growth of, of people using th synthetic fibers? Is it kind of, you know, is it all just um, Adidas or Adidas and, and Nike that do, does that at this moment? Probably not. There's probably lots of one-off little companies that are doing that at this moment. You know, what is the impact of Amazon have on synthetic fibers um, production? I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon now. In fact, maybe this t-shirt was actually bought from Amazon. And, um, you know, what has that done to, to small startups? Um, has it benefited them or has it not benefited them? So, uh, you could see that there's just so much to study and the world is so much, so very, very interesting. Um, you know, another interesting thing, so maybe you're in chemistry right now um, and, 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 and you're interested in, in something, you're trying to figure out this particular thing. Well, you know, you just look around and I've got, um, you know, I've, I've, I've got some oil on my skin just from regular everyday life. And, you know, what does this oil, what's the chemistry makeup of this oil? What can we do to, you know, benefit people that have too much oil or too little oil and think about the chemical compounds for that? Um, that's going to have very practical implications and people understand it. But then you can get into some really interesting sort of theoretical um, models of how this actually works and, and model all, all those different things. So as you can see, really the best thing that you can ever do is just do something that you're interested in that's in your everyday life that you really want to do. So I'd encourage you to, if you're struggling at this moment, don't go lofty. Go and do things that you really want to do. If you want to go to um, visit water parks, study the water park industry, please. I want to see this. I think that would be so awesome because I have not seen this. If you want to see somebody, um, I would love for somebody um, in, in, you know, especially living in Florida, I would love for somebody to study the theme park industry. Hardly anybody does that. Like how cool would that be to study that and get into understanding what that particular thing is? You know, there's been some really weird phenomenon that, that have happened in the, in, in the news right now. So this, this sort of growth of the GameStop scandal, um, you know, that could be interesting to study how that actually evolved and what's, it, what's that about and how um, you know industry regulators can control that or the stock market can control these kind of things. What is the impact of, of machines in the stock market? There's just so many things that you can study. You just have to simply pick it that you're like, I kind of like that. That's something I like and just run with it. If you love breakfast cereals, go study what breakfast cereals are all about. There's a whole industry behind it. And then maybe if you're a chemistry person, you might study better tasting breakfast cereals like just don't take the lofty i have to sort of change the world um sort of viewpoint in uh, in don't don't absorb that immediately that comes later you need to get that traction to see what are the problems that are out there what are the big lofty problems that people get and then you layer that on top of what you're trying to do it doesn't start you know the sort of deduction view that that people have with science i'm not a big believer in that because i don't think that's where ideas come from ideas come from our everyday life and then we have to induce from our everyday life to come up with a big grand theory then we deduce from that big grand theory um, with our everyday life so with that Give me a thumbs up to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take care and good luck. All right. Bye.